Dyspepsia is the medical term for upset stomach. After eating, your stomach may hurt, or you feel bloated, nauseous, overly full, belching. Despite the high prevalence of the disorder, there are no approved treatments for it in the Western world. This leads people to seek out alternatives like baking soda, which the manufacturer promotes for use for upset stomach. The problem is that it contains sodium bicarbonate and therefore has the potential for significant toxicity when ingested in excessive amounts, potentially resulting in serious electrolyte and acid-base imbalances. Uh, the labels were modified in 1990 to include the warning, do not administer to children under age 5. Because of reports of seizures and respiratory depression, even just a pinch may be too much for an infant, and even just a few large spoonfuls could be fatal in a child. Another new addition is the stomach warning, stressing the importance of not taking the product when overly full with food or drink. Why not? Well, if you're familiar with Scholastic Science Fair volcanoes, right? They're baking soda and vinegar, right? Baking soda and acid, like what's in your stomach. This warning was added at the request of the FDA because of multiple case reports of spontaneous gastric rupture, where people's stomachs burst. But exploding stomachs aside, even just sticking to the suggested dose may still cause adverse effects, so baking soda cannot be recommended, especially in young children, pregnant women, alcoholics, and those who are on diuretics, uh, common blood pressure medications sometimes referred to as water pills. What about acid-blocking drugs like Nexium or Prilosec? Uh, they work better than sugar pills, but not by much, helping 31% of dyspepsia sufferers compared to 26% helped by placebo. In other words, 5% better than nothing. These so-called proton pump inhibitors have been extremely lucrative for the pharmaceutical industry, raking in billions a year. But now that we have these massive computerized databases of patients, we can start to evaluate some of their possible long-term adverse effects. For example, possible increased pneumonia, bone fractures, intestinal infections, heart disease, kidney failure, and even all-cause mortality. The latest concern to surface has been the association between the use of these drugs and the risk of dementia. The problem with all these studies just showing associations, though, is that you can't prove cause and effect. Maybe taking the drugs didn't make people sick. Maybe being sick made people take the drugs. Right? Uh, so maybe it's, it's not that these drugs are the cause of these infections, fractures, death, and dementia. It's just that they may instead be a marker for being sicker. But there you know, are potential mechanisms by which drugs could have some of these effects. Uh, for example, here's the death data. The longer people are exposed to these drugs, the higher their apparent risk of dying prematurely. But like, how could suppressing acid production in the stomach increase mortality, which is mostly like heart disease? Well, suppressing acid isn't the only thing these drugs do. They may also cause a reduction in nitric oxide synthase, the, the enzyme that makes the open sesame molecule that helps keep our arteries healthy. In terms of dementia, a key event in the development of Alzheimer's disease is the accumulation of these plaques of a sticky protein called amyloid beta. And if you just stick Alzheimer's-like cells in a petri dish and drip on increasing levels of the drug Prevacid, the cells start churning out more amyloid. And the same thing with Prilosec, or Losec, or Protonics, and Nexium. Now, just because something happens in a petri dish or a mouse model doesn't mean it happens in a person. But most studies to date have found this link between dementia risk with the use of these drugs, including the largest such study to date, involving tens of thousands of patients, that conclude that avoiding the chronic use of these drugs may help prevent the development of dementia. Though an alternative explanation of the link is aluminum exposure, which itself may play a role in dementia. And so maybe those using acid-blocking drugs have heartburn or something, and so are also using more aluminum-containing antacids, and that's actually the real culprit. We still don't know. What we do know is that there's an almost cultish faith in stomach acid suppression as some kind of medical panacea, which has led to a progressive escalation of dosage and potency of these drugs, all the while mounting evidence suggests these drugs may cause a variety of adverse effects and are overprescribed. How overprescribed? The rate of inappropriate use of these drugs is about half. Half the people on the drugs shouldn't even be on them.
uh, these rates are worrying because uh, they mean that these drugs are prescribed for things they shouldn't even be prescribed for, meaning there aren't even proven benefits to outweigh the risks.